Yeah, good, good. Oh, wait, do I need my name tag? Uh, not if you, you don't want, want it. it. We know who you are. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> um, you talked uh, about Boba Fett. Yeah. I, I want to talk to you first about genres, because you look at your IMDb and you have Jackass Forever. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the book of Boba Fett, and right. they are about as different as they can be. How do you approach such wildly different things? Yeah. To you as a composer, are they wildly different? I would say yes. I mean, it, uh, they, they feel that, you know, any genre or style that you're working in, you know, it has its own, its own, uh, you know, different mechanisms for making it work and feeling like that style. But what I, I always try to approach it as just as a single musician. It's like, if, you know, if I'm working on in like a hip hop area or arena, as opposed to a heavy duty orchestral arena, I still approach it as just like the musician that that you know that I am and that that I you know look up to be that other you know to other people. But it's like uh, it's truly like you 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 approach it in the same way, but you figure out how to uh, give it its own flavor, you know. And um, I think just from my musical background, I, and you know, I, as a kid, I was playing a lot of different styles of music and. Uh, while, I, while I was in university, I was doing a lot of student films. And, you know, it, every project bring, brings different people to the to the table and different sounds and styles to the table. It's what is really fun is mixing it up like that. Like I, I enjoy the fact that I have just as much fun doing this project as I did with that one. And, um, you know, and it's it keeps everything new. What's crazy is when if you're working on in one style, sometimes that informs how you write. For this other thing, you know, it's like uh, maybe like a synth patch that I used on a on a pop song. It'll inform. Oh wait, no, the viola line and this other cue for Boba Fett should maybe go like this. You know, so it's it all informs each other in some sort of weird way. Like any lesson you learn musically, you'll use at some point. I feel like it, you know down the line in your career. That that's that's a lesson that an orchestration teacher told me one day, and it's totally true. It's like anything you learn you know, musically, it will come up in your life at some point uh, as a composer. You'll, you'll call back to that sort of, you know, lesson that you learned at, at one time, you know. Yeah. So who were your musical inspirations kind of growing up, and are those similar to what your, who your musical inspirations are now? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it, uh, musical inspirations when I was a kid were, you know, it's a lot of, I grew up in Mississippi, I'm from Mississippi, and went to school in New Orleans, and so, uh, I grew up playing blues music and playing in, in bands and you know with friends and family that uh, we played a lot of different roots music and then that that definitely rang true my time in New Orleans I played in a lot of jazz bands and things like that I mean um, Helen Wolf Muddy Waters I'm a huge Herbie Hancock fan uh, Miles you know I mean you know all all these different artists that I still I still listen to you you're know? down in the Delta you were yeah. you were you were deep in the Delta yeah, yeah. yeah. love it but, that, but it, it just kind of uh, it was an, a musical upbringing for me that uh, then when I you know when I went to university and really decided to I wanted to be a composer full time you know I obviously studied Stravinsky and, you know I mean film composers Bernard Herrmann I mentioned him in the in the panel he's one of my favorites um, yeah I mean the three B's are always big ones Bach Beethoven and Brahms. I can always go back and listen to their music, and it, it just still feels so new and uh, contemporary and, and complex and interesting, you know? So, I don't know, I, I have a lot of inspirations and a lot of folks that I listen to because I just love music. I love working in music, I love checking out new music, you know? I was talking to a friend yesterday who suggested a band and I checked them out last night, and it's like, you know, you, you learn something from everything you hear, Everything you try to figure out. How to, yeah, I'm a pianist, so I try to figure out songs when I, you know, when it, something inspires me. You know, so yeah, it's a lot of different inspirations, but I think that adds to like how I like to approach music. It's a, it's a lot of different genres that you can somehow blend together in, in some sort of way. Can we talk a little a bit about your process of crafting a main theme, which is up front and 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 the focus of the thing, versus writing for underscore, which is just supporting and not meant to be necessarily paid attention to heavily. Is is your process the same? Do you approach them differently? How do you go about that? I, well, I will say, as far as the, the Book of Boba Fett, Ludwig Gorenson wrote the main theme, and he just did a fantastic job with that. You know, it's, 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 
it feels like a big song, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and a, you know, I've, I've taken a lot of lessons from him as far as how to build a theme, you know. Um, and he he just writes great themes, so you know, I've learned from one of the best, I think. Um, but yeah, you know, if you're coming up with a main theme, I, I do feel like it needs to be such that that piece of music can stand alone without needing to see a, a single frame of picture or anything. It's, right. it, it's almost music for music's sake at that point, whereas underscore, you know, you are directly tied to the storyline and everything you do has to support that storyline and add to it. So there are it's a much different approach as far as like underscore and main theme. Um, a lot of times you have to just completely, um, like the, the picture will always tell you what it, what it needs. And, and you can add a lot of subtext with the underscore by maybe referencing another theme and um, you know doing doing certain things that kind of like add value to the storyline happening. Um, but it, yeah, like a main theme would be something that sort of all, is an all-encompassing st single stroke of the brush, and that you know hopefully will sum up the gravity of the of the story, or you know, or even um, just be you know just sort of reference that that main character the main environment that you're in in some sort of way and underscore like you you're just in the environment the whole time you know so yeah. i imagine in your career you've hit kind of a creative writer's block from time to time what are your tips and techniques that tend to work for you when that happens some yeah sometimes i have been you know at, at points along the way Maybe in the course of one episode, it's like, okay, what, am, what do I need to do here? I can't come up with like an, an idea that I love, you know? Um, a lot of times I'll leave the studio and just listen to music and walk around the block. You just take a break, you know? I mean, one of, the, one of my favorite things to do, it's usually on Sunday nights, um, you know, after dinner with my wife, I'll be like, I need to go just take a walk, you know? And uh, maybe go out for like an hour, just throw the AirPods in and just listen to music because that's, you know, that you need to have like one special moment for yourself to kind of, you know, break things up in certain ways and just, it's almost meditative, you know. Um, so that's what I've always loved to do. And a lot of times you'll come up out of that with a new sort of energy. It's not it's not that you're like directly inspired by the music you've just listened to, but you just have, you come out of it with a little bit more fire and intensity and you're ready to go for Monday morning. At least, you know, for me, it, it always helps. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of times it's like if, if there is a, a problematic piece that I can't quite figure out, I'll just step away for a while until it comes to me, you know. That, that's the main thing. I mean, a lot of times working in TV, though, you don't have time to have writer's block. <laughs> so you have to really, like, buckle down and uh, always, you know, a, another way to get out of it is, like, to maybe listen to the main theme again. Or, or, or think back to the main theme and like, oh yeah, no, there's that one section or that, there's that one line and you can break that apart in certain ways. It's like, you know, you could treat it as a motivic writing where, you, okay, there's a motif here in the, in, the, in the middle of the harmony that I think I could sort of come into a cue a certain way and just think of it on a more like motivic, like cellular level. And sometimes that opens it up to grow from a very small idea to a bigger one for the cue, you know? Coming into Star Wars, the world of Star Wars, I imagine it has to come with a little bit of a double-edged sword, right? I mean, you you are entering the world of John Williams, which you get to pay homage to, and, and but you're also there's a burden maybe or an obligation maybe i don't know if you feel that way but i know the fandom can demand a lot of all sure. of its creatives how have you dealt with that coming into working on the book of boba fett and and balancing the work that's come before versus kind of carving your own path the um, yeah it's you know at the beginning of this project knowing that and knowing that legacy of john williams and of ludwig and there are other incredible lucasfilm composers as well I mean, there is a musical complexity there that these, this universe, the Star Wars universe, lends itself to. And there's, there are some of the greatest themes ever written, Mandalorian included. It's like Mandalorian and, and the Star Wars films that John did. It's like, these are some of the greatest film themes ever written, in my opinion, you know? So like, um, you do want to honor it in some sort of way by like adding that, keeping that musical complexity intact. Um, and uh, just you know, always uh, servicing the project in a in a really you know musically engaged way. Uh, you know, there there 
are other shows that maybe don't take that sort of like high intensity approach maybe but for these you need to because it's the, it's important and, and the fandom as you mentioned the fandom is like so fired up about music and as they should because it, you know I, that's how I got into it as a kid right. and that how everybody got it you know it's like I think back on the first time I watched Return of the Jedi and was just floored by the music you know and it, it, my mom told me to watch um, like we had the VHS box set of the original trilogy and I was, I was just blown away like I rewatched it a million times it, it was probably like nine or ten and as far as you know that feeling that I had when I was a kid you know if, if I can approach each cue that I you know while I'm working on the book of Boba Fett and have that same sort of spirit about it of like just a pure essence you know just a natural reaction to this amazing storyline and this amazing universe you know if you can just sort of stay pure on that sort of level you you don't get too uh, scared of it you know it's um, yeah it's it's more or less just going back to that younger version of yourself and being like I love the storyline I love these characters I care about these characters and I care about the, the sound of this the scope of the show that um, if, I, I had to catch myself a couple times and say like just remember you know what would like the 10 year old version of, of Joe like here you know and if you can kind of like start there you don't you don't get too whack, wacky on the uh, on the pressure of it and the intimidation you know when you were working on the vocalization for the scene that we watched in the panel, um, the, the where Boba is going through with the and the funeral pyre montage, yeah, were you thinking Duel of the Fates? Because that vocalization is just so. I mean, again, it's the legacy of Star Wars. Yep. You, you hear vocalization like it, that, and it, well, you know, Duel of the Fates like opened up that avenue as being one that can definitely work for Star Wars, and I think right. what John did in Duel of the Fates is just incredible. You know. Um, I wasn't thinking specifically about it. I was more thinking about just a uh, an elegy, like a, a choir motet that just could add that sort of uh, depth. And uh, we had used so many vocals throughout the whole show that uh, I thought it was a fitting moment to like create an original, almost like Star Wars elegy out of this text, you know, this this Mandoa text. Wait, was that your idea to do the Mandoa yeah. text? That's fantastic. It, it's well, great. and it, you know, on a on a more literal level, it's like Boba Fett is not a Mandalorian. Right. You know, if we want to get specific about it, but he has that lineage right. um, and connection to the Mandalorian. So, using Mandoa as the, you know it was the Star Wars language, like using that, it was a bit of a stretch, but it still it still felt apropos to, to use that as as the original text for it. And I, I went online, and there's just like there's website after website about you know different original Star Wars languages. And this one just felt so right, and there was just some amazing phrases that have been used in other, in the canon, you know, in, in different Star Wars shows and everything. And I was able to grab a couple pieces of this text and just string it together in a certain way. But it, it just felt it felt right to have like a choir elegy for that moment to be. Yeah. I, without context, it moves you. So I mean, I, I think that it serves its purpose if it's um, doing that. So. Uh, I imagine you received like a number of constructive criticisms from directors over your career. Is that something that you were always good at taking, or have you figured out ways to understand that that's for the betterment of the project and not personally directed at your craft? Yeah, it's yeah. Sometimes getting a note is tough, you know. Um, it, it's one of those things like Ludwig taught me this lesson. It's like it's, you work your your tail off on a piece of music, and then when you send it off, you know you have to be okay to like let it go if it, if it comes back and it's not right. Um, but you know, you hope for the best. You hope that everyone sees the vision that you're trying to to show them. Um, but yeah, a lot of times, yeah. I mean, it's a collaborative process. Like it's not. Yes, it's your music, but it's not. Um, it's not only for you. Like everyone, everyone needs to be on board with what you do, and that's just part of the process. And I, I think I've gotten better at it over time. But um, you know, you, if you get a note that says like, no, this is wrong. Let's change it up. You, what you want to try to do is like to stay in that zone of okay you know now I can make it better you know like every note is a chance to like make the scene work better and, and you know support the vision of the director a little bit more so yeah you just have to accept the fact that some of them will be thrown out and uh, you go back to page one and try to make it make it work better you know and, it, and it's always usually it, it works that way you know is there a particular genre that speaks to you more than another that you hear in better that if you had your druthers you would work in if, if you got to pick a project for it just in general yeah um, 
Yeah, I think as a composer, I would love to do just like a really heavy-duty drama at some point, just because there's always so much, it seems like, you know, it's a genre that you can kind of like let all, let all your hair hang out a little bit musically. There's a little, always a little bit more space, you know, to, for music in a, in a story like that. But I love it all, you know. I mean, even, even in this show in particular, there are extremely high-intensity action sequences that require a certain style and then but there are these really touching emotional moments too and I, you know I, I always enjoy writing both but um maybe at some point yeah the, like heavy duty orchestral only maybe just strings I don't know I love writing for strings but you know something that you know has a little bit more space in the project to like really feature music more you know um the, but I'm, I'm cool for whatever. <laughs> I love it all, so, yeah. Uh, I think we're going to lose you in a second, but are there any projects coming up after Boba Fett that we need to be on the lookout for you that you want to talk about? There, There's a couple. Maybe maybe I shouldn't mention, like, one or two things, but, like, there's some irons in the fire um, that, I'll, that I'll be working on this year. But I, I can mention I'm, I'm producing songs for Trolls 3. It's this uh, okay. DreamWorks, DreamWorks movie. You know, I worked with Ludwig on the last one. And, uh, so that's been that's been fun. I'm, I'm doing a bunch of cover songs, and we're having the whole cast sing on these arrangements that I have of these songs, and that's been a blast. Um, there's a Netflix movie coming up called School for Good and Evil um, that Teddy Shapiro, a, a good friend, is scoring, and he he's composing it, but he he's brought me on to score produce. So that that'll be sometime this year. Um, yeah, and then other you know outside of that, it's a couple irons in the fire. Can't talk about it. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you so much you so for your much. time. Thank nice you. to meet you.